DLC time! Welcome to the Ancient Gods Part 1, Part 1! I'm gonna title this the best I can. So the DLC was released in two parts, Ancient Gods Part 1 and 2, we're starting with Part 1. Part 1 is known for being a pretty decent step up in difficulty from the main campaign. It has been tweaked a lot in the most recent patch. I'm not going to go over all the tweaks because I don't even think there's a definitive list of them all, and I don't remember offhand all the changes. But yeah, it's still going to be pretty hard. Don't, don't you worry about that. Previously on. Oh Jesus, that's a lot of text. It's okay, we already know what happened. Doom guy shoot good? Shoot real good. Not good enough, though. There's still work to be done. A new threat has arisen. All the holes. <laughs> yeah, the, the rest of humanity just looks at the mess and it's like, Oh, fucking what now? Yeah, a new threat has arisen. Paying for all the fucking repairs. I'm going to Burger King. It's destroyed. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Now I gotta get to work. Gonna go hunt down dad. I knew it was here. Sir! Weather's disrupting the signal, but we'll be able to teleport him onto the rig's main deck. Uh, Dr. Hayden, ready to launch the package, sir. Whenever you're ready. We cannot regain control of Erdak without the Seraphim's help. You broke the seal when you awakened the Icon of Sin in their world. The balance between their two dimensions has been broken with the demons now in control of Erdak. Portal ready in three, two... start on what appears to be the big shell from Metal Gear Solid 2. But actually, it's a it's a UAC facility in the Atlantic Ocean. I don't say it just looks like an oil rig. Same lady who can't be shot, though. Well, the bridge made me remind of, rem, reminded me of the big shell. The UAC won't hand over the Seraphim without a fight. Oh, no, we're on the worst part of Deus Ex, Human Revolution. So as you can tell, I have said fuck it to any skin rules that I had before. I just equip whatever skins I feel like. So my ballista has this awesome hot rod painting on it. You've reached middle age. <laughs> I do guys get there. He's anywhere between like 35 and 2000. Middle age is the mullet slayer. Right. But I do not have that one, sadly. Just getting all my runes set up. So when you start the DLC, you are fully upgraded. You have all the runes. You have all of the weapon masteries. You're, you have all the weapons. Uh, you don't have the crucible, though. I don't think you get that in, at any point in the DLC, which is strange. Maybe they just wanted to add that difficulty, but... Oh, yeah, I guess they left it in the Icon of Sin, come to think of it. So there's the reason why it's not there. I just now remembered that. <laughs> oh man, the mank assault. Do a flip. And to start off, 
this first level is just going to be kind of to ease you in. It's probably the easiest of the three levels in the Ancient Gods Part 1. It's just a somewhat more intense version of the standard campaign, I suppose. They don't introduce a whole lot of the new stuff that the DLC has in this level. There are a few new things, but mostly it's just, to start off, it's just going to be more of the campaign. This is probably completely off base, but something about the appearance of this level reminds me of Doom 64. Hmm. I think it's because it's blue. Yeah, any specifics? I'm not sure I I'm not sure I see the same. I will say, I there is plenty of story that happens in the DLC. It does take more of a backseat to the gameplay this time around, but plenty of plot happens. I'm going to be focusing on it as little as I can, because as I said at the end of the main campaign, I've lost my patience for this game's plot. Uh, you'll see what happens, and what happens happens, and it's weird. But to start off, we need to find the Seraphim key so that uh, we can resurrect the Seraphim, who is who we who is who originally gave us our supernatural powers. Do you find the UI change interesting? Yes, uh, this was actually added for the update in the Ancient Gods Part Two. These little icons around your crosshair. It shows uh, how many blood punches you have, what your chainsaw fuel is, as well as, uh... What is that last one? Oh, you're, uh, it's your flame belch. I kind of liken it to, in the Tony Hawk rem... Okay, you're dead. <laughs> I kind of liken it to the Tony Hawk remakes, where... When I first saw that, when you got back on your board, you just did this, like, rewind animation. I was like, oh, that's not like it was before. I don't like that. I wish you could turn it off. And then once I actually played with this on, I was like, oh, this is the first time in my entire history playing this game that I know how many blood punches I have. So it ended up being very useful. Yeah, it means you can focus on the center of the screen without having to look at the corners of the screen for information, taking your eye off the action. And there's a lot that happens in this game. So... Yes, I've grown to quite like this edition. It's a little touch that makes a world of difference. <laughs> Orb. That's, that Arachnotron is completely useless from where he is. I'm also going to be using the shield a lot more in the DLC. I've, I've realized its use, as well as its ability to ram into dudes. When you do it, it gives this, like, weird, almost booming bass sound for, like, half a second, and it's very satisfying. So tutorials got turned back on by default. This is to introduce in one new mechanic, the turret. Let me just turn tutorials back off now. These things are a pain in the ass, and they used to be even more of a pain in the ass. They're just there, they're eyeballs that hide in their little totems, I guess. And when they're out, you gotta take them out. They die with, like, two shots of either your sniper shot or your ballista. If you're quick enough and switch between weapons quick enough, you could probably take them out before they go back into hiding. I'm usually not quick enough, so they, they survive a little longer than I'd like. Mechanically, they seem a little bit tedious. They are. They're probably one of my least favorite inclusions of the DLC. Everything else that was added in Part 1 is pretty cool, honestly. We're going to be seeing a lot more of what's been added in Part 2, mostly. Part 2 of Part 1, I mean. Jesus, this is going to be a pain to, to specify what I'm talking about. Part 12.
We're talking as a whole. This is part 13. You have a 1 2. Yeah. Everyone knows when you add 1 and 2 together, you get 12. looks so annoying. A little bit. And I keep... Well, it doesn't help that I keep missing. Like, the shotgun from any distance other than point blank is gonna be pretty useless since it's such a small target. I just... I see that it's there and I fire with whatever I have out. And then I realize, oh, it's not actually that useful. So the DLC is focused very much on the combat. Not a lot else. There's not as much platforming or secret hunting. The only collectibles are codex entries. And also they counted the uh, Gordon Nests as collectibles in the DLC as well. So you're going to also want to keep an eye out for those. There's also no challenges to do. So you don't need to worry about getting those. You can just fight however you want. With fights this hard as it can get in this in these levels... It's, it's very appreciated. I don't want to have to worry about doing specific challenges when I'm doing these hectic fights. And I'm sure you've already noticed, these fights are... They, they're increased in length quite a bit already. And yet you start fully upgraded and everything, too. It's not like there's any other upgrades for you to get. Yeah. It is strictly like, you were at the pinnacle, now fucking deal with it. Any coins or sentinel crystals or anything will be useless. Uh, I mean, he powered me up. I think I've already been honored. <laughs> yeah. I've stood and laid in his presence. Got them. Thorn, thank you so much in the last few parts for mentioning the Mancubus's, like, little waddle. <laughs> the pointy sidesteps. I never noticed it before, but now I can't unnotice it. What's that mean? Yeah. I just use the chainsaw or the chain gun a lot more in in this playthrough because I feel like I've been neglecting it through both of the modern Doom games, and it's so good in this game that I I'm, I'm doing it a disservice by not using it. I feel like also the shield offers a bit of respite while you're trying to actually deal with all this crap. Very much. The, sh the shield from the front is pretty much impenetrable. But it, it just doesn't last terribly long. I hate that I'm just reminded of the image with, like, Doom Guy with his ass out. <laughs> and so it's just that, but with the shield in front of you. In stereo. Oh. Oh, I think that one got out of its stagger state before I can get to it. Disappointing. It took too long. The one time I wish I had the glory kill speed up rune equipped. Oh god! I was a little bit too close to the Baron junk. He was just wailing on you while you were doing other shit. Yeah, I didn't even notice him.
I found that in the DLC, there's going to be a lot more instances where you've killed everything that's actually a threat, but there's still, like, six weak enemies left to kill, and I'm, and I'm just like, all right, I wish I could be done, please. Revenant's got his head stuck in a grate. <laughs> just want to move on. You see them playing cards. <laughs> Playing jacks and they're all just stepping on him. Got any bees? And you can't help but watch. Oh my god, standalone lost souls. Haven't seen you guys in a long time. And I don't think I'll be seeing you again for a long time either. It's a very inefficient way to clean the floor. That line is so clean. Oh boy, Marauder time. They've also changed up the Marauder very slightly. Not as mechanics necessarily, but when you stun him, it makes this noise. <laughs> that looks really goofy. Holy shit. It's re it's, it is very goofy. You might as well put some Tweety Birds flying around him. <laughs> right. I mean, it's another thing that's kind of useful. I, I think it's so that when you're focusing on things other than the Marauder, you know when he's not staggered anymore, so you're ready to start fighting him again when he's conscious. It, it feels a bit too goofy, but it is useful, I guess. I get the idea, it's just the effect itself just seems super out of place. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how else they would do it, unless it was like one long Marauder, oh, which would probably be goofier. Eee! Ooh! <laughs> like he's having <laughs> severe indigestion. God, I, I love that one. It's still my favorite. Well, there it is again. It's so good. I love it. That was the best grenade ever. Oh, these fans are hilarious. If you don't turn them off, they, like without hesitation, yeet you across the fucking world. Won't be seeing that with this fan, but uh, a few fans from now, you'll you'll see its effects. It's quite funny. Thought I killed that thing. No, you did now. Yeah. The fear not, there's another to take its place. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, maybe I could chainsaw it. I am so low on ammo. I appreciate that they invented a new enemy to mildly inconvenience you. As if the carcass wasn't enough. Oh yeah, this DLC loves carcasses. Get ready. Ugh. I think they took out a lot of carcasses when they reworked part one, but they're still noticeably that they feel a lot more prevalent and annoying than they did in the main campaign. And that's saying something. Here's Gornest number one. What do you do with that part you rip out anyway? Do you just have a collection? <laughs> I wish. Just keep like a heart sack and on your side, like as a fanny pack. Just... Uh... Wow, that's... There are two gore nests in each level. If you get them both, you get a skin. like the idea of Doom Guy's home just having the meat pit, which is where he just drops off all those hearts. <laughs> Showing somebody around the, the Fortress Doom and uh, this is my meat pit. It's just a basement, just stacked with beating hearts. Oh my god, the smell! Oh. Don't go in there. I'm just showing you this so you stay away. And this is the kitchen. It's got three microwaves. Why three? They were on sale. Doom Guy's kitchen is actually really neat and well kept. 
I mean, the Fortress of Doom seemed pretty clean overall. Yeah. I mean, that's that's because Vega likes to keep a tight ship. I imagine Vega's a neat freak. Vega hired a maid. <laughs> the maid from the Jetsons. Ah! <laughs> Baron of Hell in a maid outfit. Like I said, those fans work fast. There we are. He didn't even know I was there. Should really clean up here. This is a mess. You want to go into the electro pit to pick up those papers? I, yeah. Look, this is Inosha approved. I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble. Well, that's what. I'm pretty sure that's just a plot of Viscera cleanup detail, isn't it? You're right. I actually would quite like like a Doom themed map for that game. Just clean up every all the mess the Doom Slayer left. I feel like there is a level in there that's basically that on a spaceship. Is that game like moddable? I have no clue. I've never actually played it because it doesn't. <sighs> it is a kind of game I do not enjoy, but I respect that it exists. What, you're not a huge, like... Oh, hello, Archvile. Anyway, uh, this is not what I need. Look at this fucker. <laughs> the Archvile just accepted his fate. Just stood there like, Yep, that's how I die. Uh, it's, it's the Unmaker, I guess. Okay. Oh. Oh! Okay, this time, you gotta use the fan. Oh. They knew you thought it was fun. Woohoo! Wow, you get some fucking distance, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell what's music and what's screaming. <laughs> One compliments the other, really. Out of context, that sounds like a very, like, dad rock opinion. <laughs> I can't tell what's music and screaming these days. I think I'm going the wrong way. You are. This is where you came in. So it is. I appreciate you look back a bit unsure if it isn't or not. I know it was wrong, but was it that wrong? It looks right. Look at the Seraphs. That's pretty much the whole codex of the whole Part one is going to be mostly just the Book of the Seraphs. I've not read any of them, so I can't tell you what they're about. I think it's about the Seraphs. Nah. It's probably about th some s sandwich. <sighs> I did my best. Oh my. This is saucy. Vinaigrette saucy. Oh. <laughs> You're just running on the ground on your chest. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is what you were trying to say, but I'm just imagining Doom Guy like on his stomach reading a book, sliding around. <laughs> like with kicking his feet behind him. I mean when you got onto the platform, you were very low to the ground. Oh. <laughs> he took a misstep. Everyone does that. Oh, I'm very close to death, and this is going to be a very hectic fight. But I have one life, thankfully. There are still lives, and they will give you a handful of them. I will say, I'm not going to get all the lives in in this one. I, tr I get every one that I see, but, uh... Or I try to, anyway. But, uh, it's, again, it's still not part of the collectible, so I'm not going to go, like, terribly out of my way to make sure I get them all. So this DLC seems incredibly stressful, so that's just more to add to the pile. Yeah. Oh! Through the hose?
One thing I recently learned as well, your standard dash does damage as well, even if you don't have the uh, chain gun shield up. It just, I think that doing it with the shield does more damage. <laughs> Did he pop out his eye and feed it to the other one? <laughs> That'd be great. That's obscene. Chain glory kills would be cool. If you glory kill two different enemies like really close to each other, that does a unique glory kill that somehow combines the two. I love seeing like a, a quick multi-part, a multi-step thing, but one of the steps in the middle is just not there. Honestly, previously I thought you were going for the Slayer Hunter, where the fuck they're called. Instead, just missed and got a fucking imp instead. <laughs> well, I mean, something was achieved. It's like, oh man, oh crap, oh man. Not the imp. My fuel. Slayer, sir. The Seraphim's key is close. I'll mark it on your HUD. The voice actor for the intern is amazing. He is saying this stuff so, like, casually and business-focused. Uh, Mr. Captain Death. Uh, Darth Vader, sir. Uh... Look, he's not there to get murdered, so it's all fine. When in doubt, Marauder. I really like them. This DLC does like Marauders. It very much does. You stabbed him in the back, you turn around like, what the fuck? <laughs> that can happen? Oh! I do love that he was casually walking away, and then when it goes back to him, he clearly ate shit. <laughs> Good point. Where am I? It's like, yeah, I, I can take this. What's a little self-destruct? Aw, ammo. The zombies in this area are very intense looking. You'll come back to him. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I thought that was a turret. <laughs> but it's a quad it's a quad damage. Very wide turret. The large boy. It's staying out for a long time, it has a lot of health. What the fuck? It's like my bullets are going through it. Power-ups do not last long in Doom Eternal. They lasted much longer in uh, Doom 2016. In 2016, there were even passives you could get that increased the timer. Yeah, fuck that guy in particular. Ooh. 
Another one for the collection. Yeah, say, I'm glad you were kind enough to put it back in place. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Oh, that's better. Really coming at you. Yep. Yeah, you, you don't want to mess around with this DLC. It is very fun, though. If you want more of a challenge, it'll give it to you. Oh, and I saw a tyrant over there. Can't wait to ignore it for a while. <laughs> See? Shoot him in the boob. Run away. That's how I live my life. <laughs> that guy was lost. Like, what was he doing down here? Trying to fuck you over, but he forgot to bring him out. Missed his cue. And everyone, once he gets back to hell, everyone's going to be pissed at him. I feel like I'm low on ammo a, a lot more often in this level than I have been in the campaign as well. There's so many big threats to focus on and less time to find a chainsaw man. That's a different property entirely. I feel like at this point even you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, I'm fighting. That's all I know what's happening. <laughs> ah, everyone's favorite enemy. More tentacles. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> he needed to make sure he was out before he shot me. The, the Mankey Trundle is really good. <laughs> Mankey Trundle. <laughs> That needs to be the name of a song that exclusively is played on seven tubas. <laughs> You're like one more piece of brass short of a fucking ska band, so... Tuba ska. And just a saxophone being thrown on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> And then just one broken trumpet. <laughs> this is the best song. <laughs> that no one here can make. So avant-garde. Speaking of songs, as we mentioned early in the main campaign, Mick Gordon, due to numerous circumstances, did not return to make the music for the DLC. I'm going to now look up who did, because I don't know it by heart. Um, regardless, the music in this DLC is very good, and it very much has its own style somewhat. You can kind of hear little differences between how this person does it and how Mick Gordon did it. Uh, and it still sounds very good. In fact, I almost like this better because it's not quite as heavily compressed as Mick Gordon's stuff. It's hard to reconcile bad blood. Composers for the acclaimed Doom Eternal DLC, The Ancient Gods, Andrew Holschult, former frontman of Texas Groove Metal Band, Burying the Trend, and partner in crime, David Levy. I I'm sorry, was it, what was that genre again? Texas Groove Metal Band. Fucking Groove Metal, that is a genre I've never heard of. Yeah, you, you've heard of Pantera, right? Uh, yeah. Where Pantera, Rob Zombie, kind of. Some of their stuff is more groovy. White Zombie, especially. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, then I know exactly what it is. All right. I guess it's more more riffy thrash metal, I'd say. 
I'm very bad at the specifics of genres. It's metal with a groove. Uh. Don't know what else I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I never would have guessed. Also, we're in a Slayer gate now. Oh, okay. Fear not. Those didn't go away. This one's hard. The second one is actually going to be in the third level of the Ancient Gods Part 1, and that was probably the most heavily tweaked thing in the entire tweaking process of the DLC. But I will be getting to that once we get to it, because there's a lot to explain that. It pretty much got completely reworked two separate times in two different patches. But this one stayed the same, to my knowledge, and it's it's decently challenging. It's just another Slayer gate. Where the hell did that Hell Knight come from? So... Ooh. That was a new one. You're always seeing new ones, man. Did they add any more? I don't think so. Yeah, there's just a lot of angles. Yeah. Especially for the weaker zombies, there's always... They, they have a lot of glory kills as opposed to the bigger enemies. Like the Archvile, which I can't chainsaw no matter how hard I try. We typically have one glory kill for every direction you kill them in. Oh, oh yes, that felt good. Ubus. I appreciate every moment when I realize I have three chainsaw fuel and can chainsaw something bigger. I don't care. That Doom Hunter did not get a chance. Was he just getting brutalized by the tyrant or something? No, I was just very efficient at taking him out. Okay. Efficient at taking him out and successfully ignoring the tyrant, as always. Yeah, it's not hard. So that one was just Doom Guy missing the eye repeatedly, right? <laughs> I hope so. I mean, you'll get the brain either way, but the eye, stabbing the eye directly will look better. And he sadly failed. So what's the purpose of this? So now, instead of getting an Empyrean key, you get a support rune. There are three of these throughout part one, and you can equip one at a time. So it's essentially a fourth rune that has its own slot. I only really used this one, where destroying a weak point generates a concussive blast. I forget what the other two were. I was not reading them while I was talking. Uh, more damage for blood punch at 75 health or lower. And uh, if you, an enemy kills you and you use an extra life, if you kill them shortly after, uh, you get your life back. Thank you for paying attention. You get you get a gold star. I can read. But no, I don't. I don't find too much use in those other two. I think the concussive blast from destroying a weak point is much more useful. Yeah, those other two are super situational. Yeah, this one's just like, okay, whenever there's like, whenever half of the enemies are around, it's, it's going to be very tasty to kill them and everything around them. Yeah, it's just extra damage basically now. Yeah. Oh, oh. See, I was dashing into him and you can see him going like, oof. It's very <laughs> rude. Yeah, it's just, it's just bullying. <laughs> no booty. How'd I miss that? Come on. <laughs> it wasn't even attacked you, it was just hauling ass down the stairs and ran into you. <laughs> it looked like it was trying to pat me ace. I just tripped and fell down the stairs, it's fucked up. Ah, come here, buddy. I haven't seen you in weeks, why don't I go grab a beer? A scuba suit. Oh. A man trapped in a scuba suit. <laughs> we threw the man away. He's still alive, but I mean, he'll be fine. Yeah, now you can uh, 
breathe underwater. And there's some, there's a handful of swimming in this level. Gotta go back. This is kind of a more difficult to find secret. This optional button here will raise some pistons underwater over there, which gets you to two different secrets. One BFG ammo, and I believe the other one is the second gore nest. I don't know, the collectibles seem just kind of underwhelming. You got this, I believe in you. I just appreciate that this is a triple-A game where you unlock skins by doing things. That's, that's a lot of boys. That's a lot of very hidden boys. <laughs> I got it. Yeah! You got a jock strap. <laughs> I'm proud of you! Thank you, Zombie. Yeah, got a new skin. At the start here, I'm just using the Praetor suit, but from here on out, I will be using whatever skin I unlock in the following level, so I'll be using that skin next time. Not that you guys are going to see it very often, but you know. There were some enemies here, but I killed them already. It was just a few zombies. I got lost. <laughs> nice. Just imagining Doom Guy with, like, the diving suit horribly stretched over his frame. All of his armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of his armor. And then the helmet bent out of shape to fit his <laughs> helmet. Somehow still fully functional. The rain looks very nice. It's like eating glowing mushrooms in Metal Gear Solid 3, as long as he thinks it works. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, uh, if you grab mushrooms, like glowing mushrooms, you get a, like you can do a codec call. Paramedics, like, that, that's not how they work. After Snake asks, they're like, can these, can these glowing mushrooms charge my batteries? Uh, hmm. Whoa. Oops. Can we use glowing mushrooms to finish the textures? <laughs> nah, they didn't model the underwater. I didn't expect you to be as much of a dipshit as I am and miss that jump. Oh. It's fine, I hate the ocean anyway. You know, I love the ocean, but pictures of, like, deep water... Or being in cloudy open water in a video game scares the shit out of me. Yeah, no, exactly. Like I hate I hate open water. I hate deep water. I hate anything kinda like that. And I also learned recently when playing Valheim with Wang, actually, that apparently sailing the sea with heavy fog fucks me up real bad. Really? Yes. It was uh it... Mm. That is an interesting fear. Because, like, I'm already uneasy with the ocean, and then add that, and it's just like, oh, I, I, I need to stop. You know, unique fears, like, not to, like, almost delegitimize that, but, like, unique fears really fascinate me. Yeah, to be fair, it's not a thing you just intrinsically know, it's something you find out in the moment. Yeah, exactly. With something like agoraphobia... Wait, that, that's not it. The fear of the, the fear of the water? Is that agoraphobia? Uh, are you thinking Thalassophobia, which is the, the deep water thing? Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. I mean, with that, I mean, it's cloudy and a shark could run up on you. At Foggy Sea, I mean, a shark's not gonna, like, be flying at you. I don't know. Seen some <laughs> shit. Oh god, Buff Totem. Jesus Christ, oh yeah. This DLC introduces Buff Totems just appearing in the middle of fights now. Rude. Look, I live next to the ocean. I know a thing or two about the ocean and sharks. I mean, I live in Tampa, so I do as well. My dad even caught a shark once. Ooh, very cool. Your dad could beat up my dad. 
<laughs> I, I would, no, my dad's a fucking coward. Okay. <laughs> no, but please do. Let your dad do that. I need it. <laughs> the Seraphim's body is in a secure location, a thousand feet below the main deck. I've marked the best access point. I wasn't a fan of the pop noise at first, but it's really grown on me. Yeah, me too. I don't think I ever disliked it, but I like it more every time I hear it. Just a little bit of levity in the pure fucking chaos. Maybe it's because we don't take the game seriously anymore either. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> I really... I keep thinking back to arcade mode in Doom 2016. I mentioned it at the end of the LP, but never showed it off. It was really cool, and I think it would fit even better in this game than it did in 2016, but it's not here, and that's really disappointing. Though, they have, it has been said, um, even though there's not going to be any more full DLC campaigns added from this point on to Doom Eternal, uh, there's still going to be additional content here and there, like the walls in the fucking way. Uh, like skins and stuff, and there's a new master level in production as well. So maybe they'll add arcade mode later. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like in wrestling when one wrestler sprays the other with a fire extinguisher. Hey, look, those little guys can sell like nobody else. Some guy's like, oh, hell yeah. What's he thinking? Well, we gotta get a thousand feet below the deck, so. From Doom Marine to Doom Submarine. <laughs> so let's just hop in the submarine and. Oh, no, it's. Never mind. Let's just hold on to it, I guess. You're gonna get the bends like hell. Oh, I'm, I'm not a fan of this. Oof. The doom bends. Not feeling that. It's like how Soma is one of the most interesting games I will never play. So down here is where the Seraphim's body is being <laughs> held. <laughs> being a two, yeah. So we gotta do a little bit of swimming down here. Oh look, a shark! Punch it. Let's go punch it! Let's go punch it! Punch the shark. Oh! Doom, Doom Slayer may be strong. He's not stronger than a great white. That wasn't even a great white. You're, you're probably right. The Seraphim was the loyal aid to the Father. You and every human on this planet owe your reality to them. Honestly, like, I'm... I'm I spent so much time reading books about sea life as a kid, I probably should have known better. I've seen Jaws. Well, you got me. God. And plus, the turret distracts you so much. It's like, I want to get your stupid ass out of the way, but there's a Dread Knight behind me. More like a dead knight? Now he is. I'd like to make him dead. I like that look on his face. Just like, what the hell, dude? Uncool. Oh, you are not who I meant to grapple. <laughs> Sorry, I don't feel the same. Okay, that one was actually pretty good. Yeah. A lot of them disappointing, but that one was pretty fucking good. Almost went the wrong way. Just another shark waiting for you. 
Heard you trying to punch my brother, huh? Well, there's a lot of radiation around here, and I got fists now. Ooh. A two-up. As you imagine, gives you two lives. The Seraphim's chamber is close by. Here's my thought process here. I don't know how to get that. I'll just fast travel to get it later. You can't fast travel back to this point. So I didn't get that. I'm guessing it opened up when you flooded the place. <laughs> Thank you, Thorn. <laughs> that made me feel better. Uh, I, I guess so. I like something I do open some door somewhere. I was expecting to be able to go back because there's been so few points of no return in the whole game, but we found one of them. There's no like actual collectibles here, though, so I guess they didn't think that I'd want to come back here. See, that's the actual real challenge of this DLC. Getting the two up? Exactly. What you were doing is just cruel and unusual. Oh, this fucker. I'm somehow hating the turrets more watching this footage than I did when I was actually playing it. So if you're standing right next to them, will they just not pop out and attack you? I believe so, yeah. That they're like piranha plants. Also, to be fair, the difference between watching and playing is playing, you're in the moment and you're dealing with so much shit that the time is less noticeable than you're sitting here watching and waiting like, God damn, how long will this take? Exactly. Yeah, but when I'm playing, it's just like, oh yeah, they're annoying, but they're just another part of life. Sometimes it'd be like that on this bitch of an earth. It is a relic from their past. The organization's most closely guarded secret. Alright, so beyond that door is the Seraphim's body. Uh-oh. Okay. There's two of them now. This is like the marquee fight of the Ancient Gods Part 1. Two Marauders. They're not that bad. I've had enough practice. Welcome to the shit show. Uh, also, to be fair, you actually have a solid method, like, pinned down. Yeah. For, for people, like, less, let's say, skilled in dealing with the Marauder, this would be a fucking nightmare situation. Yeah, you're right. It always kind of frustrates me when people who are, like, super good at games downplay, like, things that an average player would find challenging. And now I'm doing it, and now I've become the villain. <laughs> You've become the beast you hate. It's more that I understand it now. Now that I've played so much of this game, and I've become halfway decent at it, I just don't think of these things anymore. I'm like, yeah, it's. I didn't find it that hard, but I remember, like, I've played... This is, like, my fourth most played Steam game now. I've played it for, like, 42 hours at this point, and I haven't even recorded Ancient Gods Part 2 yet. To be fair, when you reach a certain level of skill, like, what is obvious to you is not obvious to everyone else, and you kind of forget that. True. I mean, I, it, it, frust it frustrates me when people do that, but I don't blame them or anything. Nor is it something I'd be like, fuck you, dickhead asshole, or anything. I mean, it's only an issue when they're smug about it, but otherwise I understand completely. Yeah. I guess that adds to my psychology that I would prefer to watch someone who's okay at a game as opposed to someone who's an expert when it comes to like watching people play. Even then, I don't I don't think I'm a Doom Eternal expert by any means. Oh, he turned into a balloon. So, man, fourth, fourth most played at 42 hours? Come on, man. I've had a decent gaming PC for approximately one year. My most played game is Team Fortress 2, which can run on a computer without a graphics card, because I've done that. Chip. It's fine. To this day, Team Fortress 2 is still my most played, and I haven't played it in several years. It's like a virus. You never fully get rid of it. 
I, I just looked at my fourth most as fucking Fantasy Star Online at 200 hours, so what the fuck oh. do I know? Fantasy Star Online 2, excuse me. Very important. Didn't that just come out a couple years ago, like, in the States? Uh, in the States, yeah. Fun fact, it's a lot more than 188. Oh boy. I, I had a JP account, that I played a lot. I love when there's silence, and you hear the gas can reloading sound. It just sounds like a dumped <laughs> ass. Also, in my Defense Dragon's Dogma is behind it by one hour. That's a good game. I haven't played it nearly that much, but it's good. The game I have bought like four different times and have put over like 400 to 500 hours into. Sometimes you just fucking mesh with a game, like you in Doom Eternal. Oh yeah. I bought this game on Switch, by the way. <laughs> oh god. That is the third time I've bought this game. <laughs> it's, uh... I mean, while we're just doing a fight, I may as well talk about how that port is. I mean, it's comparable to Doom 2016. It plays very well. Solid 30 FPS with a few dips here and there. It's definitely playable. The cutscenes look like dog shit. They're letterboxed, and they're, I'm pretty sure, 25 or less frames per second. But the game, when you're actually playing the game, it's, it's, it runs quite well, about what you'd expect. I mean, I'm sad that my third most played game is a game I don't even like. And that would be... Dark Souls 3. Oh. I feel that I clocked in a couple hundred hours in Dark Souls 2. Thing that had been low-key implied, just outright stated. Samuel Hayden's the Seraphim. Great. Well... Ba -da -ba -ba -da -da. <laughs> did that need to happen? Nah. I mean, did Vega being literally God have to happen? No, that felt so fucking contrived. Oh my god, I still hate it. It was so sudden. Doctor, am I God? <laughs> Yeah, sure, whatever. Shut up, anyway. I'm I'm a god servant, but I made God my servant, kinda. Oh, how the cookie turns. We besties now, we drink beers together all the time. Oh, how the cookie's burnt on the outside and underbaked in the middle. I like the image now of both Vega with like one of the little floating drones and Sam Hayden going to drink a beer and just splashing it all over their faces. <laughs> <laughs> No, Vega, I feel like I've really gotten to know you a lot in the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Doom Guy does the exact same thing with his helmet, too. Doctor, there is now beer in my circuits. <laughs> Football! <laughs> <laughs> so, does it get dumber from there? Yeah. <laughs> We've yet to reach the dumbest, I promise. Whoa! I wonder why you like this game so much. Call, you call me stupid? <laughs> I mean, you said it, not me. 